Today we're going to look at the Corrosion Analyzer in OLI Studio. A user proposed a problem. The user has a carbon steel tank that contains a brine solution. The solution uh, will is normally under a nitrogen blanket. Occasionally, though, there will be some air infiltration, and so oxygen will actually enter into the brine. Now, for our calculation purposes, oxygen and nitrogen are very slow solubility into the brine. So we don't really need to concern ourselves with the vapor phase. What we do need to know is how much oxygen and nitrogen are dissolved into the liquid phase. So we're going to do some pre-calculations before we get to the corrosion analyzer so we can take a look at the actual compositions. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of streams. The first stream we're going to create is something I'm going to call a standard airstream. I created the stream. I'm going to just rename it and I'm going to call it standard air. Uh, standard air is approximately 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen, so we'll add nitrogen. Oops, that's N3, that's wrong. N2, 0.8 moles. And O2, 0.2 moles. And we're going to have it at 25 degrees in one atmosphere. We're not going to do anything with this stream at, at this point. We're going to add another stream, which I'm going to rename and call it standard nitrogen. This will be N2. It'll have one mole, no oxygen, no water. Okay. And now we're going to create our work stream. This stream happens to be a 30% weight percent potassium carbonate solution. I'm going to change the units here. Uh, I'm going to go up here to the units button. Okay. I am going to very quickly switch it to mass units. It is potassium carbonate, K2CO3. It is at 30 weight percent. Let's make it actually 300 and 700. So that becomes a 30 weight percent solution. I'm now ready to do some uh, quickie side calculations. I'm actually going to run two mixer calculations. The first mixer calculation I'm going to run, I'm adding a mixer. I'm actually going to run this. I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call it with air and I'm going to take the potassium carbonate solution okay so we've added the potassium carbonate solution we're gonna add standard air and we're gonna do a survey we're gonna leave it at 25 degrees one atmosphere we're gonna do what's called a multiplier survey okay and we need to tell the program what to multiply it by so we're gonna multiply by standard air now I have done this uh, previously, so I sort of have an idea of how far I have to go. The standard air range, because it is very insoluble, is I'm going to go from 0 to 3 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, grams or, uh, or aliquots of uh, the air, and I'm going to go by 100 increments. And I'm going to just run this very quickly. So what I'm doing is I'm titrating the uh, potassium carbonate solution with air. And I want to see how much of it I have to add till I see breakthrough or at the beginning of a vapor phase. I'll just plot that. None of these things here look uh, important to me, so I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm just going to look at the phase flow, and I'm going to look at the moles of true vapor and I'm gonna look for breakthrough and you can see that when I have no air added to the brine there's no breakthrough there's no vapor phase and then I get up to here to about 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4 aliquots of the air and I have breakthrough so I'm gonna look for that 2.14 value in the tree I expand the tree I need to move things around a little bit so you can see them. And there's the 2.1. You can see I have vapor in a summary. If we'll go to the point just before it, there's also some vapor. I could take it there. But if I go too far, there's no vapor. So 
2.1 is what I used previously. I'm going to use that. I am going to actually add this as a stream. If I close it, I have the stream. So this is a solution that is saturated with oxygen. All right, this is on moles. Again, I don't... I'm not thinking in moles currently, so I'm going to change it back to mass. So I have about 4 times 10 to minus 3rd moles of nitrogen and 1 times 10 to minus 3rd grams, I'm sorry, not moles, grams, of oxygen in this liquid phase. So I don't really care what's in the, in the vapor phase anymore, but this is what will be if I have the entire vapor phase saturated with oxygen. So I, now I can do some corrosion calculations. At this point, I will then add a uh, corrosion rate calculation. This is uh, a single point rate. Let's do it versus temperature. And we'll go ahead and calculate that. And here's the general corrosion rate for this as a function of temperature. The circles are the corrosion rate, the triangles are the is the pH. You can see there's very little uh, response here. What is interesting to, to do here is I could do a composition survey in oxygen. I know I have to go to about 1.3 times 10 to the 3 grams of oxygen to be fully saturated, so I can do a composition survey in the corrosion rate and see the effects of oxygen. So that's composition. I'm going to spec oxygen. The range here, I know it goes to about 1.3 times 10 to the minus third. I'm actually going to take this to be 2 e to the minus third, a little bit higher than that. And I'm going to change the number of steps again to 100 so I can see some things here. So I'm at, I'm at 25 degrees, 1 atmosphere. It's going to start off with 0 oxygen, so it's a 100% nitrogen blanket, if you will and go all the way up to uh, a saturated condition of oxygen. It runs really, really quick. There's a lot of points going on here. And now we can plot the general corrosion rate. Now this is actually a function of the corrosion rate in carbon steel as a function of the amount of oxygen. So 100% nitrogen at the left, saturated completely with oxygen at the right and you can see that the corrosion rate goes up very very quickly from about uh, 0.20027 up to a, a concentrated value of about 3.8 millimeters per year uh, as the solution becomes completely saturated with oxygen. So you can do a very quick calculation in composition this way. You could also do another calculation. Originally, when I did my demo prep, I did the same mixer calculation with nitrogen. So I could do that. I can go create a new mixer. Click up here on streams, add a mixer. Okay, this one will be just a mixer with nitrogen. Same thing, we'll, we'll select the potassium carbonate stream, this time standard nitrogen. We'll run it over the same range of conditions. Oops, that is the wrong value. Uh, need to do a multiplier. Nitrogen. Same sort of range. 3 times 10 to the minus 3rd. We'll go in 100 units. We'll calculate it. We'll see where the program broke through. Again, this is not helpful. We'll get rid of the default plot. We'll go to phase flows, moles of true vapor. And you can see it breaks out pretty close down here at about 1.8 e to the minus fourth. This is uh, the multiplier, so that's what I'm looking for here. And I have vapor there at 1.5. I have none. So I could take this point, add it as a stream. So this is the
brine saturated with pure nitrogen do the same calculations there not really necessary because I, I did it here in this rate one calculation which shows you the effect of adding oxygen to the brine so this is a, a studying the effects of oxygen uh, from a pure nitrogen condition where the overhead is all nitrogen to the point where it's completely saturated with oxygen and what we mean by that this is saturated with air uh, so this is a point where it's 80% nitrogen 20% oxygen so that's we're assuming it's an infiltration with air if you have any questions give us a, a call uh, my the OLI phone number is area code 973 Five three nine four nine nine six. That's of course in the United States, or you can email us at oli.support at olisystems.com. Thank you.